Welcome to Pub Politics on this Super Tuesday, I guess a super edition of Pub Politics. Although, in my opinion, they've always been super with you guys here. Happy Super Tuesday. Yeah, thanks to uh, same to you. <laughs> so Phil is here on the Democratic side, Wes is here on the Republican side. You know, we were just talking on the newscast about Super Tuesday. It's interesting. Uh, Newt Gingrich, who won South Carolina's primary, uh, at some point, uh, barring a miracle, he'll eventually get out. Uh, we don't see a path right now where he would win the nomination which would be a change because it would be the first time in a long time that South Carolina did not pick uh, the nominee. Will this do anything uh, once Gingrich does get out to hurt South Carolina standing as far as you know, a bellwether for, for, for politics and picking presidential candidates, or is this just a one-time blip on the radar, do you think? It could, and what's happening here is the, I really believe the boundaries between the states are starting to crumble, because you've got the internet, and you've got the 24-hour news cycle, and you've got mm. the national news cycle, and those things are starting to drive media instead of, you know, local TV stations, no offense, guys, but, mm. or, or, or local newspapers. So these states, all of the states, whether Florida, New Hampshire, South Carolina, they're all being kind of driven by national trends. And I think that's what you're seeing happen. So there's not as much individualism anymore I, as, I believe as that. individual Absolutely. voters. Yeah. Bill, you agree? Yeah, I agree. And I think there may be some, uh, some games and shit going on with the, uh, at the Republican National Committee level uh, as they jockey for, the, for next cycle's yeah. calendar. And okay. I think Florida has demonstrated that they are, are show that they are more uh, um, res uh, um, reflective of the, of the, of the uh, GOP voting population. All right. Well, anyway, the Republican primaries roll on, yep. and uh, eventually they'll have a uh, your party will have a nominee. They're never for, ending. Yeah. Does this? Uh, let's one more quick question on that. Uh, we've because we've heard a lot of talk about this, maybe more on the national pundit mm -hmm. side. But uh, the longer this goes, does this hurt yeah. the eventual nominee? It does. You, okay. it, it does. Competition is good. It's good for them to fight each other and, and and flesh out some of the differences and the attacks. Well, what this is doing is it, it's too long that they're they're wasting too much money on mm -hmm. each other. They're going to go up against the president who's sitting on a massive bank account, not have the money. This thing needs to end so these guys can concentrate on the president, not on each other. Dem and, Democrats are enjoying uh, right. watching uh, yeah. Mitt Romney being driven further and further to the right. I was going to say, you probably wish there were more than 50 states so we could have more primaries. Keep it going. I'm yeah. enjoying Puerto Puerto every Rico. minute of it. Yeah. Yeah, Virgin Islands maybe. Uh, get down to <laughs> Guam. Go to Guam. Yeah, okay. Absolutely. Right, the Guam primary. <laughs> yeah. All right, now let's talk about something back here in South Carolina. We're talking about state house turnover. Uh, in, in the past couple, the past week or so, I think we've had three lawmakers uh, announce that they will be retiring or not mm -hmm. seeking re-election here in South Carolina. I mean, Phil Aventis from Sumter Center, he, we had known about him for a while, mm -hmm. but um, uh, Jim Harrison, uh, who's a representative from Richland County, and then Senators Ryberg and Senator Land earlier today announcing that they are going to retire or not seek re-election. And we were talking about this in the newsroom. We were trying to figure out if this was a, a normal trend for, for an election year. It seems to me that it may be a little bit more. Uh, Wes, and it's not just in one party. It's the mm -hmm. ones we mentioned, two Democrats, two Republicans. Your feelings, your opinions on why we're seeing this turnover is this a, is this yeah. just a reflection of politics today are people I, getting tired of it what's what's the a little story? bit of all that i think politics is becoming so visceral so hate-filled so much drama and we're also seeing a lot more people being unreasonable and not debating issues they're closed-minded you can't influence people with real debate it, it's not what it used to be and, and a lot of these guys are starting to look at it as listen this is a complete waste of my time i'm gonna go home and and, and not deal with this crap what does that say, though, about the process then, Phil? I mean, how, how can, you know, I would think the, the average voter sitting at home, I mean, they, they want a good economy, they want jobs, they want low gas prices, they mm -hmm. want, you know, good education for their kids. They don't want to sit there and watch this bickering. And it's not just in South Carolina. I think we're seeing it nationwide. I mean, is this the, this is the trend? And is that a reason for what we're, why these people are leaving? Yeah, it, I, I wouldn't say it's a, a, the reason why they're leaving. Uh, look, I mean, in South Carolina and all across the country, we have citizen legislators, mm -hmm. uh, folks that sure. uh, that don't do this full time. They, right. They've got to go earn a living back home. Uh, in the case of Senator Land, he's been uh, 42 years in public service. That's a long time. Uh, and he wants to um, spend more time with the grandchildren mm -hmm. uh, and back with his law practice in Manning. So, um, you know, there is always that balance of, of how much time you can devote to public service and how much time you actually need to devote to your family and your career. Getting back to the, the politics part of it and how people, some of them think that this is a waste of time because of mm -hmm. all the bickering, I mean, is that the, the 
general direction we're heading? I mean, can this be turned around? Can we get back to compromise and, and, and acting like adults in some cases? No, I think it's going to become even nastier. What's happening is um, a, a lot of the old school white Republicans are retiring. Most of, I mean, sorry, Democrats are mm -hmm. retiring from rural areas. Those guys are being replaced, I think, primarily by African Americans. And then Republicans, you see a bunch of Tea Partiers coming in. What's going to eventually happen in the state Senate is you're going to have basically the African American caucus and then a bunch of Tea Partiers yeah. here. And those two are going to end up clashing like this as you see a lot of the more moderate um, or should I say like reasonable Republicans um, leaving the general yeah, assembly. That, that, and you've got to thank the Republican Party who draws Democrats. the line, yeah. who draw the lines uh, for, for that dynamic. So thank you. Know, you. Well we, sh we, we may know something, the redistricting went to court, we mm -hmm. may know something this week uh, because everyone gave their arguments, the, the, the judges said that they will try to rule this week and, and that, you know, all the arguments are, were involved around race. Yeah, it is, and, 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 and again, I, I know I, I harp on this a lot, but it's really a democratic thing. What's happening is the white Democrats, Phil's, Phil's brand is becoming extinct, mm. and that's what's happening because these democratic districts are drawn more African American, and as these old school white Democrats bow out, they're going to be replaced by African Americans. So uh, you know, you're going to have a bunch of Republicans, but it's the white Democrats that are disappearing off the face of and South got Carolina. The Republi you've got the Republicans literally drawing those maps in South Carolina. So thank you again. No, I mean, you that, guys that, are responsible for this dynamic. That's so not true. You guys have just. Mission accomplished. Get rid yeah, of those listen, white the, Democrats. Listen, the, so you the, can say the, this on TV. The, the, listen, Thank you. The the map that came out of the state senate at least was a Democratic was drawn, protection. Was drawn, by, Democratic was protection drawn by Republicans. Plan. If Republicans truly had their own say, so we could have picked up two or three more seats with redistricting alone because of the way trends are in South Carolina. But we didn't. It was a bipartisan process, and I've called that map from the very beginning the Democratic Protection Plan. You, you, you see the dynamic in the House. You pack as many African Americans as you can into a super majority minority district, uh, and 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 again that. Will Oh. drive away white Democrats in South Carolina. That didn't so, happen in the so, Senate. So uh, there you've got the, you guys, mission accomplished. Mm -hmm. <laughs> mission right. accomplished. Uh, real quick guys, want to talk about something else the Senate is debating, and that's this uh, possible state day of prayer, which would coincide with the national day of prayer. Obviously this brings into uh, uh, play, you know, government, religion, how closely should they be together. And, and again, it's, it's, an, it's a, yeah. a battle we've, we've heard about and talked about for decades. Well, as much as the Democrats like to say the Republicans hate black people, <laughs> the Democrats hate God. Uh, I mean, I, you're, going to, you're going to see the Democrats fight this bill, and, and I think it'll, it'll be a slow process to see a, a prayer bill pass. I think that's very unfair, and I think you're going to see some bi very bipartisan support. As long as the concerns are, are addressed that, you know, the separation of church and state issues are, are, right. are, are addressed, I think you'll see this thing soar through the House and soar through the Senate and get in passing the law, and we'll have a state day of prayer. Perhaps, but last cycle, Phil actually ran an ad against a state senator saying he hated the Lord's Prayer. Mm. So uh, we'll see, Phil. Well, he v voted against the, the display of the Lord's Prayer in a public oh, place. I wonder geez. how Senator Massey will, will oh, vote geez. on this. Oh, jeez, jeez. All right, well, that's, you know, this is something, uh, you know, it's, it's something that we'll, uh, the Senate is uh, so scheduled to debate it on, on, on this week, and, and we'll see if that happens, but it'll be something we'll keep our eyes on, and I'm sure we may talk about it in a future episode of Pub Politics. If it's going to uh, inflame tensions, then we probably will talk about it on Pub Politics. We'll try. Speaking of pub politics, the pub version, guys, this week? This week, 6 o'clock at the WIG, uh, Robert Bolch is running for city council. He'll be on, and we'll have oh. a legislator on also. And that is Wednesday at 6. Yep. PubPoliticsLive.com is the website to catch these guys in action. They're also here at Watchbox News every Tuesday. Guys, appreciate you coming by. See you next time. Thank Thanks. you. All right, back to you.